Hi, welcome. We've started making uh, tutorials about Herbsluft WM. And this time around, I booted up my SSD. You know that I work with the bay and I switch between SSDs. So I have one hardware machine, one desktop, and the SSDs pop in and pop out. At this time, 15 desktops, 15 SSDs. Now let's update and let's do a, a total video, but the goal of the video is to go for a dual screen because uh, I am now working with with physically two monitors who ex exactly have the same thing. So it's a mirror thing. So I'm looking at the same um, image here. Okay, I put it up, something red up there says I need to update. You either do it graphically and click and say update, apply. But you know me, I like to see what's going on my machine. I want to see the messages that come up. I want to learn the application. I want to know those names. And there's a new Linux kernel. So I know already, oh, we're jumping from 5.3.1 to 5.3.5. .5. It has been a while since I've booted this thing up. Last time I booted it up on October the 10th today, right? 29. So here's the date of today. You can click on it. This is Polybar, by the way. Um, so 29 so is about, well, 11, 12 days ago. Um, so that's our update. What does it cost us? 600 megabytes and 35 is extra upgrade size. So that's how you analyze things. And you say, okay, all right, fine. So there's stuff in here. A lot is from Arch Linux. And these two guys are from Arch Linux. So would be probably right, assuming to say that we are probably 98% Arch updates. So you say yes, and you follow, you read, because for instance, you see a new bash coming on. So you, anything you put in the bash RC or aliases and all that, um, that's important to know what's going to be updated. The Arch Linux keyring is updated. That's the way how packages are signed. So their new developers or developers are gone. Then the key rings, well, they, they, um, they're they refreshed really. So that's one of the things that's, are ex that's actually important if you have something that's an SSD of one year old or something, or even older. Like uh, I've done a, done a tutorial and I believe we went two years back in time so yeah, the first thing you do is install the new keyring, the Arch Linux keyring, and then update. So don't just update then, but do first sudo pacman s Arch Linux keyring, and get that in. So, okay, the kernels, Linux firmware, call kit is there. So does, this, this is all new stuff in 10, 11, 12 days. The Telegram desktop, virtual box thing. Dropbox is here, Sublime and Yeben. So you follow along. You don't need to scroll. You can actually press spacebar and you have the very last line that's being installed. So this thing is working. That's fine. Let him do his job. In the meantime, um, dual monitoring and all that, and also QWERTY. So gonna show some things that are uh, going to be related just for me. Oh yeah. So screen key. So super spacebar just made me switch between layouts. And let's make that a little bit bigger. So for instance, control find Azerti, right? I have here tech keys. I would like to keep one, two, three, four, five, ten. That's okay for me. I like it that way. But there is more, there are more Azertis. If you want, if I wanted to move this one to tech 10. Then I can't. I can't because I have a Belgian Azerti. So I should sell, tell the system, forget about that. Forget, forget about the QWERTY kind of look and, and layout I have here on my hardware. I have a ampersand, etc. etc. So this is my one, this is my two, this is my three. And that's a French Azerti, even different in this guy and the other guy here underscore so yes it's important to look at the code because otherwise i can't move things around 
That's one thing I need to do as an Azerty user. And as a dual monitor guy, I need to do something else. I need to go all the way down here and take a look at these settings. Now let's go first here. Update is done. Next thing I'll do is a scale, then probably a CB, and then do an uphold. Uphold after the update is going to get everything from the AOR. So in sync, if it's out of date, you can tell me because I'm the maintainer now, or the co-maintainer now. Um, so we can uh, update it, the script. So this is not an application AWAR, it's a package build. It's a recipe that we update and that's it. The rest is coming from somewhere else. So this is been done as well. So it's a, a major update in the sense that there's a Linux kernel in there, so I should reboot. I'm not going to, continuing with here the explanation, X-Render. So this X-Render, what is this? Control T. There are lots of videos already about XRender, but again, XRender is going to tell me what's on my hardware ends. I have a, I've plugged in an HDMI connected primary um, monitor with this uh, resolution, 1920 on 1080. So HD, full HD, I so suppose, right? So that's, that's what's to the left, inverted right and all that's less important in hertz this is the, the frequency that i'm running at so this is what it says this information is important knowing the name of your thing now i suppose let's see if i have installed it we have a super shift d and normally i install a render and there is another one which probably is not installed alex render for the LXQT or LXDE application or desktop. But um, a render is maybe something that is going, something you're gonna like. You can drag it visually and say, okay, this one is HDMI, that one is HDMI uh, one and two. So um, analyze it. What was this again? Doesn't say. If we go over it, layout, new, apply, properties. You can have a look at the properties. That's that. Okay. The view, the outputs, resolution is a proper resolution. Otherwise, you change it to the proper one. HDMI 2, resolutions, orientations, don't start inverting things. Makes it even more difficult. Then you save it. Save as. And let's try saving this. Oh, Eric. So in the dot screen layout, I'm gonna save it. It's down here to save. So enter or I'm gonna be enter. Yeah, enter is successful. Or we do a super space and switch it all around. And then you see it better, right? Save as, okay, fine. So there is something already, Eric. So that's, that's out. We go and have a look, screen layout, Eric SH, what did we save here? Yes, thank you for your advertisement. And then this. So this gives us an, something that it, it can understand. Run X render, output HDMI, it's primary, the mode is this, the position that, rotate, etc. Which is less important, but then again, starts again output HDMI 2 with that kind of mode etc so some of the people out there have a small monitor and a big monitor so these numbers should be different I have just one big feel like it's like one long monitor but it's actually two right but it's the same resolution here so this thing you can copy paste this Control C and you can actually Let's see if we have something open here. Yep. So we can actually control V. It's in here. Alas, it's not been copy pasted. But you see the code? It's here. It's the same code that we just wanted to copy paste over. And that's what I need to do. I need to say, hey, launch your X render thing. That's one thing. And set the monitors to the dimension you have. So if you have another dimension, change them because this zero is the top left here, and the other 
uh, this is the other uh, 1920 that's actually the second screen so there's one big screen but I'm telling him there's another one a second one starting from well the 1920 so it's the X and the I the Y thing that you need to set so basically telling Herbs Luft here okay I do have two monitors and that's the way I would like to do it now I don't know if what's gonna happen if we do a uh, control save to my recording but just so you know and I'm, I'm gonna try it out super shift R loading it up and indeed my mouse is now going to the other side but I'm afraid this will break up our recording so I'll stop here but this is what I need to do to get actually my uh, two screens working.